Welcome back to Gaming Mysteries, where my childhood is seemingly hell-bent on reliving itself by reviving all of the shows that I used to love, except for Yu Yu Hakusho, so far anyways, but I figured throwing the idea out there wouldn't really hurt. Despite my sadness from this, I'm giddy that Dragon Ball is returning this July and wanted to do something kind of relevant to the feeling of giddiness. And nothing makes me more giddy than talking about the rarest breed of Dragon Ball game and that's those that manage to actually get cancelled. And of course, there's no better place to start than with this man dressed up as Goku, with the concept of a motion-controlled Dragon Ball game. Because yes, days before you or I looked stupid doing funny things with motion controls, there was another brave soul who either really liked or hated his job. Either way, in 1997, PC Game Watch would demo what was allegedly a new game in development near the completion of Dragon Ball Final Bout for the Saturn and PS1. It featured this heroic man who, against all odds, was playing Final Bout with motion controls somehow. And in all fairness, that could actually be pretty fun. More fun than using a controller, or worse and horrible, but doesn't really matter either way, because whatever the tech demo-ish thing was intended to be never came out. Microsoft would later go on to fill that needless hole in our lives with Dragon Ball Z for the Kinect. Next up, we'll be taking a look at the wonders of a magazine article in which Infogrames revealed their plans to seemingly put Dragon Ball Z on as many things as humanly possible, something that they excelled at, starting with a GameCube title that was set for a release in some time of 2003. To quote them, the GameCube game will be a much bigger, enriched product than any of the GBA series, and it will also enhance the gameplay of the GBA games, seemingly through magic I'm guessing. The GameCube game will be an action-adventure RPG with some fighting elements similar to the legacy of Goku, setting the bar really high right here. It will be a one-player title, but it will also allow for you to play as over 36 Dragon Ball Z characters. The storyline, comma, however, is still in the early stages of being copy and pasted like it always is in these games, but a developer hasn't been picked yet, which means the game is coming along really great, you guys, but the goal is to have the storyline connect with the GBA series. Moreover, you'll be able to transfer valuable power-ups, characters, and other cool stuff between the two systems. And it was also stressed yet again that transferring information from the GameCube version to the handheld version will actually enhance the gameplay of the GBA games. That two-hour game will be even better, they said allegedly. Now, I believe I found the game that's being discussed here with this majestic trailer that's comprised of not only tiny bits of what seemed to be an actual video game, but also copious amounts of stock footage with text, though, saying, Hang on to your seats. Get ready. Dragon Ball Z is coming. A super descriptive name for your video game series. Now, ignoring the stock footage and or padding and looking at the actual footage, we have Goku riding atop Flying Nimbus near Kame House, his crib, and the middle of nowhere with a couple of seconds of him seemingly fighting, and some random shots of Planet Namek thrown in just for fun. He might go there, I don't know. Which at least to me makes this game look like a 3D version of the Legacy of Goku games, and since Infograms was planning on a series of GameCube games that would somehow enhance the experience of what would be their GBA counterparts, it would make sense if the games were, if not the same game entirely, something similar in design. And that could be neat. Maybe. I like RPGs. And if they could actually enrich the original experience while providing a new game experience at the same time, or just refund the money entirely, that'd be amazing. I'd accept that. But for whatever reason, this project never came to be. Though, it's said that elements of the game would later make their way into Dragon Ball Z sagas. But we're of course not done yet, as they then went on to reveal yet another game coming to the PlayStation 2. And to quote, The level of complexity will be much different than the GameCube game. The universe will be much bigger. It won't be part of a trilogy. And it will have its own storyline. It will be an action-adventure game with a significant number of fighting elements, like the GameCube version. The PS2 title will have over 30 playable characters, but it certainly won't be just a one-player game. 
Plans so far call for a multiplayer brawl, arena style, with it stressed that once Sony finalizes its online strategy and in parentheses, meaning a network that actually exists, a low blow, but fair for the time, I suppose, magazines are edgy and are never gonna die out and they'll last forever. Anyways, the game would support between 6 to 8 people duking it out at the same time online, and the game would also support multiplayer havoc offline as well. How gracious of you guys. Now, while no name was provided for the title, given the time it was announced and the platform, I believe that the game turned into another title called Dragon Ball Z's Saiyan Smash for the PlayStation 2, or would have been if it wasn't cancelled. In a quote I translated with Google Translate to assure accuracy, it says, Atari confirms this game for PlayStation 2 and GameCube. Now a GameCube game as well, take note. With just time for release of Dragon Ball Budokai 2, continued fighting game based on the popular saga of Akira Toriyama and his wacky exciting life, Atari confirmed again. It is developing a new game, titled Dragon Ball Z, Saiyan Smash for the PlayStation 2 and GameCube. Everybody loves padding, I guess. It's soft. There is no precise information about this game, even though it is rumored that this new title will roll. The title appears in the third quarter of next year. This was really well translated by Google Translate and me. But going off of that information, a year from that article would be 2005, corresponding with the release date of Dragon Ball Z Sagas. So I imagine that whatever this game was thought to be was actually Sagas, or something else that was cancelled along the way and then stuffed into Sagas. I'm kinda leaning towards that. Just when you thought it was safe though, this man continued to speak. Now talking about an Xbox game that he didn't really state that much about, only saying that there are tentative plans for a Dragon Ball Z Xbox game. Because why wouldn't there be? Which they hope will be released sometime in 2003. It was stressed though that the Xbox game was just an idea since, to quote, within a quote, the demographic of the Xbox right now doesn't fit real well with Dragon Ball. That idea won't become a reality unless the hardware base is expanded and Xbox demographics broadened. We. The Xbox would later go on to see a whole one Dragon Ball game in the form of Dragon Ball Z Sagas. That's right, Dragon Ball Z Sagas. Three alleged games all in one disappointing product, all at the same time. Though of course, that wasn't the end of the madness as lastly a PC game was mentioned. Finally, it was said and thought by people everywhere, the PC will have a Dragon Ball Z game too. Not much was said other than that it would be a first person action game and that it's scheduled for release for the holidays at the end of that year, said year being 2002, so I'm really excited for your video game. It was hinted though that Infograms would be utilizing a proven 3D action engine to run the game. As to which one, that wasn't specified, but it was proven, so good enough. Though that could actually be a cool game, or mod. Realistically, a mod of Quake or something, I suppose. Could already exist for all I know, but the important part is that the game doesn't exist itself. So, moving on that depressing note, and speaking of depressing things, well, not quite yet anyways, Dragon Ball. It may not have gotten as much game love as Z, but there was enough love for them to cancel at least one of its games, maybe, or announce it too soon, but the game was Dragon Ball The Red Ribbon Army Saga, complete with a description, sing along if you know the words, on his continuing quest to regain the Dragon Ball, which represents the spiritual essence of his beloved grandfather, Goku is horrified to learn that death and destruction seem to be following just behind him. He soon learns that the source of this chaos is the Red Ribbon Army, who are also in hot pursuit of the seven Dragon Balls which, when assembled, will grant their owner a wish. Goku's toughest challenge lies ahead as he faces the Red Ribbon's evil generals, hired assassins, and ultimately, the army's muscle tower. He's gonna fight an entire tower. Along the way, he will meet interesting characters who will become great allies or terrible foes. Hey, check it out. Somebody wrote slash copy-pasted a story for our video game. Please buy it. Now, 
I really think that this was simply an early announcement for a title called Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure for the GBA, which is very good, but I imagine that they were just shown some later footage of the game, and if so, it would be really easy to misconstrue that as a Red Ribbon Army focused game, or perhaps they did in fact have one of those in the works secretly that just got cancelled for whatever reason, or they jumped the gun. I think they jumped the gun, personally, but either way, Advanced Adventure is a great game for the GBA. Goku is a dive kick. It's awesome. I recommend it. And now to end out on a fizzle, a cancelled Dragon Ball GT game. Said game to be a sequel of the lackluster Dragon Ball GT transformation. Not sure why that game was going to get a sequel. Is an opinion that I suppose that someone else had themselves and that was that and the game got cancelled. And this has been some cancelled Dragon Ball games. Doesn't seem like we missed anything too spectacular or valuable. In fact, in some cases, it just seems like we missed games that actually became other games, like sagas. Although, I still think a single-player Dragon Ball Z RPG-ish kind of series would be really cool if done right, which it hasn't really been done so thus far. Though at this point, I'm okay with just having a Dragon Ball game that's good, let alone an RPG or something else. And I've heard many positive things about the Xenoverse, so I may have to check that out. I'm not quite sure yet. I don't know what version to get, but this has been Gaming Mysteries. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to Ancelate, where I've been gone for a while because of weird crippling fear because I'm weird but I'm back hi guys I've missed you and I've missed being I didn't miss being gone I, I messed up my w welcome back to Ancelate you guys I'm Yuri Wind. hey videos you just watched the uh, gaming mysteries on canceled Dragon Ball games because Dragon Ball is in the air and super or Dragon Ball Super is coming back in July that's the month of my birthday and I'm very stoked about that can't wait uh, GT never happened, the mustache, Vegeta's mustache, that never happened, so I'm super excited about that, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and all that stuff, but hey, I'd like to talk about some end slate things, and recommend things on the end slate, and the first thing I'd like to recommend is the last video I did on this channel, which was a, uh, oh, it was an obscure gaming on the Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap, for the NES. Yeah, I know, it's weird. And then... The other video I'll recommend is something else, but the last video I want to recommend is actually a video on my Let's Play channel, and I have a Let's Play channel, I need to actually remember to tell you guys about that more. Uh, but yeah, I have a Let's Play channel over there, I'm currently playing Persona 3, and I'm about to start playing another Corpse Party game, uh, as soon as PSN works again, I'm having some issues getting on PSN, but um, yeah, so if anyone wants to check that out whenever there's not much going on in this channel, and you want to check out the other one, that's you're free to do so. And uh, I'd appreciate it, but you don't have to. Uh, last thing is social media stuff. Uh, Nico does the art for the segments and the channel and the stuff. You want to check him out on the Twitters and the Facebooks, you are free to do so. I also have that stuff. I'm mainly on Twitter uh, for updates and other stuff and things. And uh, as always, um, if you like the video, and you like it, and you want to subscribe, uh, that's great, and that means a lot, and that I'm forever appreciative, but I'm not going to beg you to do so. Um, yeah. But, uh, thank you again, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you make more videos soon. Uh, thank you guys for being patient with me, and I'm sorry these are so long for the people who don't like their longness. See you guys next time on Enslaved.